Well, it is that time of year. In other markets. It's Blair and Barker for Tuesday. That's rude. Uh, 707 is the first They're trying, pitch. Jeff. 707 will be the first pitch tonight at the Rogers Center. The Jays continuing to play out the string <laughs> against the Boston Red Sox. 4-1 losers <laughs> to the Red Sox last I, night in a game that, uh, I, I mean, I, will I say, can hear the music. This is, I mean, atmosphere is atmosphere is atmosphere. I could hear the music from the Corona rooftop patio in the left field press box in the second. What day. was playing? Uh, just some stuff. But I mean, there was no noise in the stands at all. There was nothing. There was nothing. Uh, the loudest part of the night was the national anthem. Wow. Anyhow, um, the Detroit Tigers, as we came on, beating the Tampa Bay Rays 2 1. My Tigers are now a game and a half up on the Kansas City Royals. Holding down the second wild card spot. I'm adopting the Tigers as of today. In the second wild card spot in the American League. Uh, We had uh, the Philadelphia Phillies clinch last night. And I don't know if you saw any uh, shots of their party. Yep. But they know how to do it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, A lot of rich people in that room. uh, A lot of... That's probably... A lot of hairy, shirtless... That's rich great. dudes. That's in that straight room. from casino to oh, that is, You know it is. <laughs> you know it is. I didn't see it. That's not. We're not even washing the uniforms for tonight's game. Not a chance. It'll be like uh, the game where the uh, after the Jays clinched in Baltimore and the dudes were in the dugout drinking beer. But I will say that it's about best record in the National League. Do they care? That's the thing, right? How much these next yeah. five games matter? Like it does it matter getting home field throughout? Because it's the Dodgers you're competing with. You can play the Dodgers. That a big deal to you? So it would be in, in, intriguing to see that. So there's there, a lot. There's some things happening. Yeah, baseball, no. It, uh, it, this uh, yeah, this week is is turning into all 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 sorts of fun. You got the Padres and the Dodgers. That'll be great. This this tweet from uh, Matt Gelb who covers the Phillies. I didn't know about this. The Phillies moved into this was yesterday. The Phillies moved into first place 143 days ago. Their lead never shrunk below five games in the summer. Think about that. That's against the Braves. And I know the Braves were, you know, had injuries. Yeah. But 143 days where you don't let the other, where the other team doesn't get within five games of you. Yeah, I'm sure that's why, they, as an organization, they decided to do certain things, right? Give the catcher a little time to figure out what he's trying to get done and, you know, Boy, just they sort are, of maneuver around people to get them all hot at the same time. Really running well into the playoffs. Yeah, they yeah. got a good team. Like it's, you know, it'll come down to pitching and the timely hits and which one of the superstars at the top of the order will. Trey Turner's going to be a big deal for them. Like I, that's the one guy for me that yeah. could be the separator just by yeah. the way he plays Agreed. defense, the position he plays, how he can change the game, base running. You know, he's the right-handed sort of tough out that Bryce Harper. Big moments, you know, he's got a lot to prove. Got off to the slow start, right? We remember Stark came out and said, everybody stand up and cheer for him. Wayne, yeah. don't make enough money. And now he's, that was you know, last year. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, he's got um, something to prove, so it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, my yeah. my only concern with them is, um, you know, they're, they're going to have to, they're going to have to figure out Play the somebody other than bit. the Braves. I mean, they've been whipping the Braves all over yeah. the place in the playoffs. Now they ain't got the Braves to do that, too. Will that be a little tougher for them to get deeper into the playoffs? It'll be, inter- it'll be interesting. And the Padres and the Diamondbacks are better. They're just better this year. Are better than they are. the Phillies? Or, no, or better like they're than, better. Okay. Like they're not going to yeah. be an easy out. I no, know the, the, two, the Diamondbacks are I'm with you. Are the better two than could they were run into year. each other in the first round, and, and one of them could get eliminated. But I'm saying Damn, either the, one of them teams. I want the Padres to win the National League. I, it's, but I'm not I, sure the Diamondbacks are the easiest to root for. I mean, if you ask a baseball fan to Name three or four of them in the on the in the roster. They probably couldn't do it. So I don't know how good that is for baseball. And you know, a lot of people don't like the Padres. Like, just a lot of people don't like the names that they play don't like, for the Padres. A lot Padres. of people don't like they AJ don't, Preller. They don't. Yeah, they don't like Manny Machado. Like, there's some people on there to hate. Like and that's Manny what Machado. baseball's about in October. It's about hatred. I don't like the Yankees or but the yeah. Astros. You cheaters! And I despise that's fun. that dude. There it is. Yeah, it's it's odd, you know, when you look at the teams that are going to be in the postseason. Just, do you hate the Yankees? I do. I don't know why. 
See, I don't. No reason. I don't hate them. They That's got Aaron Strong. I, I like Aaron Judge. I like once. I, I find it hard to hate them. Boy, you you like Aaron Judge, like you like it's a, other than what he does performance wise. Like you As would do. Yeah, I mean, I guess he's a Yankee. He's the biggest dude on planet Earth. Like he does things that most humans can't. Nah, I might be a little jealous of that. That's a that's a, he's a bright, halfway he, reason to not pretty, like him. I think he's a pretty pretty solid guy. I like. I mean, the, he's a Yankee too. Like it's easy to hate the Yankees unless you've see, been a I find it Yankee easier. Fan. It's easier to hate the Dodgers. For me, it's easier to hate the Dodgers than the Yankees. I don't like the Dodgers. I just hope they get thumped in the first round. I do too. <laughs> I'd love to see. I'd yeah. like to see Shohei go 0 for 14. Oh, would you? Oh, the 50 50 would it matter then? Greatest season in the history of the sport. I'd like to say he didn't have the greatest season this year. What I'd like to see is Shohei to go hitless, get a walk, and steal second out off the walk. Steal it. That's all I want to see. Bases are no, I'd love together. to see. I'd love to see the Dodgers implode. I, I. I really it's would. fun I to am, watch that. I mean, it'd be fun to watch Shohei. Shohei at Yankee. If you think about Shohei versus Judge in, September, in October at Yankee Stadium in the World Series, that is the, that is the one matchup that might resonate with a wider TV audience. I don't know. I, I don't think it would be that the best baseball i frankly in terms of baseball i think i think the phillies and the yankees would would be better um but um yankees dodgers i guess i mean i'm sure that's what the commissioner's office wants sure it is, is the two highest paid teams the two storied franchises i i mean I can mean, can you can you handle another Obviously, Texas is not in it, but can you handle another World Series like we had last year? I don't know. Like I, you, uh, there's got to be one of these years where it's the most muscles hitting Although, the best part you know, of the I, season, and I hopefully that's thinking, what happens. I keep remembering though, you've you've got to be cautious about this whole. What does the commissioner's office want? Because I keep hearkening back to the Mets Yankees World Series. Yeah, no TV ratings were yeah, not no, good. Nobody watched last year either. Yeah. Hey, they didn't. Nobody watched Texas unless yeah. you're a you're a Texas fan. Nobody watched now, the Diamondbacks the unless you're is, a D-backs fan. It doesn't matter. As, it doesn't down, matter man. as much as it used to because the TV contracts are structured differently now. Yeah. And as network executives will tell you, the numbers may be down, but it's still the most viewed thing on TV that night. Yeah, so. like you could hate the Phillies. Like you could not like them. People tune yeah. in to watch that. Like you could hate the Astros. People are going to tune in and watch that. Like they're you, you're more about the 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 opposing fan base is rooting against the team because of the hatred. I mean, that's – and who's hated more than the Astros? Huh? So, yeah. you know, they're – it's lining up, I think, just because, uh, you know, the, Seattle's showing a little fight here at the end of the season. You know, if they if they sort of squeak in, well, with that pitching they got, they – You know? Oh, if they – if Randy if, if Seattle, is doing some things. If Seattle backs in somehow – with that pitching, I don't think they're they backing be, in now. They would be a hard out the, with well, that pitching. You have to be, worry about them. I mean, I still think, I don't think that's a very good lineup. It's not, but but right now their best players those, offensively are being their best players, their best which players is all you want to the this time of the year. So and, you know, a, you know, a Rosarena does like he does <laughs> like him some spotlight. It's, I mean, know, he it's, does. It's it's better than the best thing that's happened for the Blue Jays is us talking about how fast. Yeah, Alejandro Kirk looks. <laughs> uh, Tariq Scooble, Scooble, by the way, two hits over seven scoreless. Yeah, he's good. The boy. Tigers, and he's are, lined up for the uh, last game of the season. So they did, they did a good job yeah. of lining that up, getting him raring and ready to go for the last two starts. Yeah, or they'll have a nice much. rest uh, going into the. There you go. Well, uh, a bunch of other news going on. The Orioles, uh, the Baltimore Orioles, uh, optioned Eloy Jimenez. They acquired at the trade deadline. Craig Kimbrell was DF80 was released today, so he cleared waivers. Um, so that that bit of business is taken care of. This is odd. Rowdy Telez was uh, DFA'd by the Pirates. Now, Rowdy Telez has made 421 plate appearances. Yeah. He caused a stink over this before the show started. Well, because cause I don't like this. For, at 425 plate appearances, he gets a $200,000 bonus. So the Pirates basically said, we don't want to pay you $200,000, so we're just going to we're, we're just gonna get rid of you and, and, and save $200,000. Uh, 
Now, Roddy Telez made three point two million this year, so it, there will be food on the yeah. table for the Telez family. Yeah. I, I I don't like it just uh-huh. because um, I I think it's I think it's unnecessarily cheap. I also think that it just reinforces the view of that organization around the game. And I think stuff like that comes back or, to bite you with players. Or you could look at it on the other side and say, man, they might be trying to save a little bit of money to go after somebody like Except, Pete Alonso. Well, they never have. Well, that, they, they might they don't. this year. No, they well, won't. they've never had the dude standing in the top of their rotation no, they like never, they got now. No. Well, that's well, you could not, not they they've do. Had, they've a good they've starting. Never had, they've they've good never starting had a dude like before. that, that young, who'll be there for the next 15 years. They are not going they've into never the, had that. They well, aren't okay. going into the free. The biggest we'll free. Who's, they're going to do something. The, the biggest free agent they've they signed, signed is something. Russell Martin. I mean, things change. I don't, they, again, they don't, not with this Starting order. pitching that looks like they got makes you change some things occasionally. Maybe that's what you're trying to do. Well, the $200,000 is not. Sorry, you're feeling awfully sorry for Rowdy after he made $3.2 million having the year that he had. I mean, come on. Well, I mean, I mean, you signed the dude to the contract. Well, maybe you're not happy with the way he performed. Well, then, then and I ain't wasting no more money talking. on him. Again, that that's the type of thing that'll come back to bite you with well, players. The, I mean, it's the Pirates. Yeah. I mean, you, if I were you free, don't like if I were, you don't like baseball I, players, do you? If I were free, no, you know what? You don't I because of your money. career. Yeah, yeah. You don't like guys like Rowdy Tellez. you you take satisfaction that's seeing not, Rowdy Tellez get screwed out of two hundred. No, I like performing. When you perform at the highest level, you make a lot of money. Three point two million dollars, a lot of money. You get that's paid a lot for, of money. I've told you. Yeah, and he's had you, a bad year. You get like, paid. Let's be honest. Let's you get paid about. for what you did last year. That's how you get paid. Or you don't get bonuses for what you did this year, which is not what they thought warranted them giving them an extra two hundred. And you know what you do? Well, what? And you know what you do? About two weeks ago, you stop playing them. Well, I mean, I'd have to look it up. Maybe and they did can, that. No, you can continue it maybe through the year. You can manage a guy's plate appearances so that at well, the end of the did. year, maybe he, they he did that. With four, well, they didn't. Well, so so you'd rather them play, figure out a way to play him to the last day of the season, so he's three short. No, no, and they just say, no, no, you no, know no. what? This is how we no, feel about I, I'm you. I'm saying, figure out a way to get the dude four hundred. That's even, that's even either worse. Either word to get four hundred and twenty-five <laughs> plate appearances, that's or we tie the can to earlier. Well, that's what they did. Anyhow. Well, they did that. Yeah, not not this close to the end of the season. But anyhow, I, I you don't like I I don't know what it is. It's like as a so former you're spe- player, you're speaking for player, you're speaking for something you don't have any idea what you're talking about. As a that, former that's player, where it's at. As a former player, I would think you would stand Man, up for these guys. Yeah, stand up for somebody that's made three and a half million not dollars his this fault year. He made I mean, three well, uh, how, why would you feel sorry about two hundred grand? I'm not. That's basically I, what you're doing. No, I don't feel it's sorry. It's performance driven. I don't feel sorry for. For Rowdy Tellez, I would assume, that he isn't getting paid two hundred thousand. I, I, I just think it looks. Rowdy's I think it looks up dude. dumb. I think it looks dumb. I, I would. I would think if you got Rowdy on a phone call or you talked to him in person and said, "Hey, yeah, seriously, about the two hundred grand, how mad are you?" And it, because of how what kind uh, of dude he is, uh, he'd be go. I got my three point two. I'm happy about that. I didn't perform yeah. the way I thought I should be performing. Yeah, I've He's never. A stand-up dude. I, I've He's a never. Dude. I've never run it. into a baseball player said, "Nah, I don't need two hundred thousand. Thanks." Nah, it's not happening. You know that as well as I do. I don't need two hundred thousand. I don't need. Yeah, you. I don't, you, I don't need a fifth. You, of a you, 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 you would have. Yeah, if he was making minimum wage, you'd have. You'd have a leg to stand on. You ain't got one. Anyhow, I'm not going to argue. You, I'm not going to argue you, anymore you're wrong. about Rowdy Tellez. Because you're wrong. No, you. You just don't like. I don't know what it is, man. I thought you'd stand up like for these what, guys. Like who? Who, who else? Who else has it been? Name another player that I've said that about. Go ahead. Well, you get mad Whoa. at guys. Get you get mad at the guy at, at how much money guy. You get mad at George Springer's contract, and I keep telling you that George Springer got yeah, paid yeah, as a free yeah. agent for what he did. Yeah, because because his valleys look like Grand Canyon. That, okay, that's, that's why. But that's like you got to live up to what you're getting paid for. That that's the deal. No. It's sort of the same kind of thing with the Rowdy George Tres Springer. Thing. George Springer got paid. It's more performance driven George than it Springer, is got paid exactly george springer yeah. got paid for what he Man, did you just george springer got paid for what he did before the Jays signed him oh, okay that doesn't mean i can't go he makes 25 million dollars that's 22 more million dollars than the other guys and he should be performing like a 25 million dollar guy no 
Uh, so you just give nah, them all I mean, pass right for off. performance, not performance driven. No, I just it's I, not. I, 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 I'm not saying not it's not his him, fault. And you I would not give him a hall pass. I just, I just don't know the difference between a twenty five million dollar player and a fifteen million dollar player. How many fifteen million dollar players the Blue Jays you got? You keep talking about 20, how many? I'm just saying you keep talking about you keep talking about twenty five million dollars. What's the difference between a twenty five million dollar and a fifteen million dollar player? Ten million, I know. But what's I mean? Well, what's the uh, difference? The Blue Jays had a fifteen million dollar. Uh, uh, Everyday player other than Vladdy, <laughs> then we could have that conversation. What the difference looks like. That's the <laughs> difference. When you make twenty five million dollars, it's like show Otani. His season starts October first because of the amount of money he makes. It's real simple. That's that's life. You don't I'm, like it? I'm don't not, sign. Don't I'm, sign the contract. I'm not talking about comparing that's why him we to talk other it. Blue Jays that's players. That's why we talk about the twenty five million dollar thing. It's not that woe is me. Why would you sign it? It's that you make that you're. You're sort of held to a higher standard than a dude make a minimum. I don't look at David Schneider like I look at George Springer. Sorry. Yeah. It's just life. It's the you way just, it is. You just assume that every ball player's career path, that at the end of their career when they're making more money, here's the thing I'll ask you. At the end of their career when they're making the most money, most guys make their most money at the end of their career. How many of them are better than they were Five years it's got nothing to do with an organization's you, window, it, it, and you're asking no, him to carry the load. I, yeah, I'm saying it, it's, it, it's remarkable it. how many of those free agent contracts mm. look bad at the end of the you're free agent contract. Like, you're acting like George Springer's 50 and walks to the plate with a cane. He doesn't. He's 34 and he's very athletic. Like it's, it's the you. You're acting like he's so old that. So that, what's that the problem could, with George Springer? There's nothing wrong. The, so this is him. This is who? This is George Springer. This I, is what he is. Uh, well, would he be so, your, would he be your leadoff hitter next year? No, but this well, is, there, what, you, he, there, this is what he is. So what should he do? Give give eighteen million back? It's not. No, nobody said anything about him signing the contract. Well, he's not living up to twenty five million. So what should he do? Give it back. Yeah, absolutely. Well, no, he's not. So you, spread, you just told me he's it not, out to the new guys that play for the Blue Jays. You just told me he's not living up to twenty five million. So what do we do? We just hold it against him for the rest of the next. Well, we two don't years. put him in the leadoff spot. We take a little pressure off him, put it on somebody else that right now is a little bit Still better offensively be than he is. Still going to be making twenty-five million. Yeah, but next year I'm not going to talk about that because he'd be hitting seventh, so, not leading off. You know what you're going to be saying next year? You're going to be saying, "I can't believe that they're spending twenty-five million dollars on a number seven hitter." That's what you're going to be saying. That's exactly what you're going to no. be saying. Yes, it is. It is. It is, it is, it is. remarkable that you are. It you is. Got, you got your shorts all in a bunch over Rowdy Telez's two hundred thousand dollars. That is. I just don't like players man. getting. I don't like players wow. getting. I don't like players getting screwed out of money. I just don't. I, I think especially now you know a nine to five person listening to this show that after a dude got three point two million dollars, you yeah. wind it over you know two hundred grand. Yeah. You know yeah. what? Yeah. A nine to five Can't person. Relate. Well, if a nine to five person isn't you know every everybody playing baseball makes more money than a nine to five person for the most part so if that bothers them they should probably find another sport and everybody who plays hockey makes more money than someone working nine to five mm. so maybe they need to find another sport i don't get your argument that's all i'm saying well my argument is just that if you're the pittsburgh pirates and you don't have a great reputation around the game as it is because your owner's cheap has never spent money and you screw a guy at a two hundred thousand dollars. That just feeds into the narrative. That feeds into the narrative in Pittsburgh mm. that this guy's a horrible owner and doesn't want to spend any money. And you know what people in Pittsburgh are saying? Well, they might as well. They're, they're certainly not going to be able to sign Paul Skeens no, to a long term. No, program. what they're saying is, look at them two starting pitchers we got going into next year. That's, that's good. And we played meaningful baseball for about two months that we didn't think we were going to have meaningful baseball. Anyhow, that's what they're thinking. They're we'll used to on. this. We'll move on. They're used to this. They're used to yeah. They're the used Pittsburgh to they're used to owners. Like that, that, they're used to yeah. owners that need to save no, two hundred thousand dollars. Oh, not owners. They're used to owners Pittsburgh. that need to save two hundred thousand dollars. That's right. I'm sure that two hundred thousand dollars will be go to, go to good use. <laughs> Maybe they can buy a new laptop. Well, you should be an agent for, for every baseball player because you are real good at taking up for. Them. I just don't. You I, should be. No, you I should quit this job and try to. I, I just don't get go out and take up for. I don't run around and say that everybody's overpaid because I understand that. It's ownership that pays players. Yeah, look, I, I at th the end I, of the day, I mean, if you want to hold anybody complicit for George Springer's lousy contract, it's Mark Shapiro yeah, and even, Ross yeah, Atkins. They know, gave it to him. I don't even know how George Springer came into this. I, th I think you've been saving that for a little no, while. I'm just saying they gave it to him. It, it's it's, yeah, it's no. the same thing. 
Should Rowdy, is, should Rowdy they, tell Les be what, penalized because you, because the Pirates general manager gave him three point two million no. and threw two hundred thousand for think, a plate I for think, plate appearances? I think he should be happy that the Pirates thought enough for him in the offseason to bring him in that organization and give him three point two million dollars because they felt like he could help. Anything. That's what I think. Silliness. Don't overthink it and be happy that you're playing baseball at the highest level and making a really good living. And you just, uh, somebody just took $200,000 out of your pocket. Well done. And you know what? People who make a lot of money, you know what they don't like doing? They don't like losing money. You know that as well as I do. You make, people who make a lot of money, they, people who make a lot of money have a better idea of what they could do with $200,000 than people who don't. They just do. They notice it. People who make a lot of money worry about losing money more than other people. It's that, it's that simple. But the bottom line is, again, I just keep getting back to it. I really don't care about Rowdy Telesnes. I'm just saying, well, if you're the, you, if you you're the Pittsburgh, does. no, if you're the Pittsburgh Pirates, you're just feeding into the narrative in your market that you're cheap. That's all. It's pointless. Why do it? Like, why do it? What have you gained from uh, yeah, it? The I, only thing you've gained from I, it I'm is, sorry. I, is you get flamed. It's, per, it's performance driven. If yeah, they had thought that much around it to Les, he would have got the 425 at bats. It's performance driven. It is. Um, anyhow, we'll be joined in a Absolutely. few minutes by uh, Joe Castellone speaking of performance driven. Uh, he's been the voice. I didn't realize he was the voice of the Red Sox for this long. Since 1983, uh, he is retiring at the end of this year. He is, of course, a Ford C. Frick Award recipient. And uh, he will join us at 4.30 at 5 o'clock. Chris Jimenez will join us. Uh, we'll take a look at the Cleveland Guardians. Um, I guess the question is, can their, the success that they've had so far translate into the postseason? We'll also talk to Chris Fishing travels. About, the, uh, about that wild card uh, scenario in the American League. I just, I, I did the Tigers. I'm just happy this year it's not the Twins. That's what I'm happy about. Joe Siddle joins us at 5.30 as well. Yeah. And um, yeah, we've got tickets to give away. Glad to see the, the twins are not getting in. So what you get? <laughs> I'm serious. You should quit and start your own agency because <laughs> you're good. You didn't sell me, but you're pretty good at it. It's Blair and Barker. Barker's so happy. So yeah, happy that Rowdy got I screwed no, out of two hundred thousand. It's got nothing to do with happy. It's per, it's performance driven. Like George Springer and, running and, down the and dugout and after home And maybe home run. if you're a Pirates fan, there's an inkling of some hope in the future, and maybe they'll use a little bit of that money that they think they sure. don't have and spend it on somebody yeah. that can come and help them, you know, get a little bit further and help those starting pitchers. Yeah, that that two hundred thousand dollars would buy you well, a little, said he's cheap. buy you one testicle off you a good said, reliever said for two hundred thousand dollars. That's something that you could use to. Get it out in the eighth inning Test in a game that matters. Okay. Yep. Marbles. Heard of them? Speaking of the Jays. Man. <laughs> we'll go there. Uh, 707 is the first soft. fish tonight. What? You're getting soft, boy. I'm I not tell getting you. soft. You are. I'm not getting soft. I'm not getting Man. soft. Man. I just don't like, you know. Yeah, you don't like reality. Life I is do, reality, believe me. Believe and the richer you I get, work with the, you, I have to like the reality. Har the harsh reality is that's just life. Like you, sometimes you get, you don't get things you want. Be fortunate what you got. How about that? Jeez. How about that? <sighs> that is. I didn't really want to talk about last night's game. Is there anything you want to say about last night's I game? I already said what I needed to say. I said from Blue Jays talk that the Blue Jays, you know, are sort of. Can't hit fastballs. Your, te your team is so good that the one positive thing came out of the game last night was how fast Kirk looks. That's pretty true. Uh, that is uh, that is very true. I'm looking at my notes uh, from anything going on. No. I really want to use Pop Goes the Bullpen more often, but I just can't. Um, Pop's got a sinker. When it sinks, it's good. Just this don't get cute. 30th, throw a hot left, you cut. This is the thirtieth game. This yeah. was the thirtieth game the Jays have lost when they've out hit their opponent. That is the most in baseball. Yeah, it's the money at bats. It's like those at bats when traffic's on the bases and you got to really hone in on what you're trying to do and what the yep. pitcher's trying to do against you, and you got to force him in the middle of the plate. When you get it, you got to be short and quick. And um, a lot of the times they're not. If you're the Blue Jays. Before we break, do you let Chris Bassett make that start Sunday? Absolutely, I okay. love what he said. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I just love want it. Yeah. You get paid a lot of money to pitch. 
no matter what. I know. Chris Bassett's got to make that start to earn his money. He feels like that. He does. That's the way he feels. No matter what me and you think, he felt that way. And I like that. He's he's not having a a year that we thought Chris was going to have. And for him to come out and go, Ryan Yarborough is trying to make money next year. It ain't his fault that I'm having a down season and I don't want to make my last start. No, I'm making it. He's had a good season. Hopefully he makes all his money <laughs> that he should make. Uh, Joe Castiglione will join us next. It's Blair and Barker on the Sportsnet Radio Network and Sportsnet. <laughs> all right. Well, I don't know what to make of this. Probably nothing. But uh, I don't know. Maybe Zach Pop had a clause in his contract that paid him $50,000 if he gave up another home run or something. Uh, the Blue Jays uh, have options, Zach Pop, to their spring training complex. That just sounds bad. I mean, I know it's what it is. Uh, minor league season's over, but mm. they've optioned Zach Pop to their spring training complex, and they've called up left-handed pitcher Easton Lucas from AAA Buffalo. He will be active for tonight's game. Maybe Zach Pop is just, I, I don't Maybe he's reached some sort of limit or something like that. I, I don't know. ERA is Maybe they want to take a look at East, East. I mean, I don't know. He's pitched a lot. Maybe they have a, they had a number in mind when he got called up. I mean, he's been 58 games. Yeah, but I, I told know. you Zach Pop was going to be in 58 games in spring turning. I would have said they're in last place. Uh, Jays and Red Sox will continue their series tonight at the Rogers Center 707 Bowden Francis against Brian Bayo. This will be barring, I should have said, because I said in Twitter that it could be Joe Castiglione's penultimate series before he retires. That means second to last series. I know what it Okay, means. I just wanted to make Thanks. sure you knew. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. Are, are the Red Sox still, I guess they're still theoretically in the playoff. Yeah, a lot of so, things. Anyway. Miracles. But, yeah, all of that aside, it will be, we're led to believe, Joe Castiglione's last visit to Toronto as the voice of the Red Sox, and we're very pleased to be joined by Joe. Joe, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, before we get to the interview, uh, you know, just congratulations on on a terrific career. And, I, you know, I just want to say that one of the things I really enjoyed doing back when I was a beat writer in spring training was that first trip to see the Sox and being able to pick your pick your brain for a half hour before the game. And I just wanted you to know how much that uh, that meant. I always came away thinking, well, I always came away entertained, uh, but I also always came away thinking that uh, I knew more about the Red Sox uh, than I, I did going in. So thank you very much for that uh, on a personal level. Um, thank you, Kevin. And... Uh... Jeff, and of course, we picked your brain too to get the lowdown on Toronto and the scouting report, which was always so accurate. Yeah, for the most part, I guess, although we didn't have this year figured out too much if you'd spoken to us at the start of the year. Uh, hey, Joe, what, uh, you know, what ultimately did this come down to in making this decision? What, uh, I mean, you've been doing this, gosh, since what, 83? Um, I think, does yeah, it just. Two years. Yep. I think 42 years and uh, age, uh, but more than that, I think they need to spend more time at home with my family. Um, And my wife's been putting up with this for 45 years. We include my two years in Cleveland and one in Milwaukee. And uh, we have an empty nest. You know, the kids are growing, the grandchildren are teenagers, and they don't have quite the same interest in grandparents when they (laughs) become teenagers. So it was time. And, uh, you know, I had the, the Frick Award this year, which was such a thrill. And I, I've had such a great run. Uh, you want to go up before you lose your fastball. <laughs> mm-hmm. Joe, do you like where baseball's at now? Like when you, before, you know, when you first started and how the game was, and it's changed so much. Do you like where baseball's at? Well, I like the pitch clock. I wish we had it 10 years before because we probably <laughs> lost a generation of fans. Yeah. I don't like the strikeouts. It used to be exciting when Pedro Martinez or Roger Clemens had all these strikeouts, but now uh, every pitcher gets uh, one an inning, it seems. And it's just too boring when people swing and miss all the time. Fortunately, the games are shorter. I mean, they're great athletes. 
Uh, I still love the game. It's still a great game, but I just wish the ball would be in play a little bit more. Joe, it's funny you said that. I, I looked it up before because I, I knew you were coming on. The, the Red Sox had the, the third most strikeouts in baseball, and, and I wanted to ask you, do you think that's an easy fix? I mean, the Red Sox, I think, are is a little bit of a surprise with where they're at and playing meaningful baseball down the stretch here, and, you know, you have no Devers here the last couple of games, but, you know, they're still mathematically still in it. How do they fix the strikeouts, and do you think it's an easy fix? Well, I think Rafi struck out a lot because his shoulders were hurting. So, I mean, you can fix that. I think uh, Sedan Raffaella can get a better grasp on the strike zone, uh, which will help cut down his strikeouts. And uh, But they probably need a couple of uh, other type players who are contact hitters. And, uh, you know, you look at a guy like uh, Arise. I mean, that's that's wonderful to see a guy. He's got the low exit velocity, <laughs> but he... He doesn't strike out, and he's about to win his third batting title. And uh, I think they'll make some changes. They need more right-hand hitting, and uh, there's no reason why they can't uh, get right-hand hitters who do have power and make contact, uh, which is, I think, ultimately so important because no matter what some of the analytics people say, strikeouts do matter because you never advance runners. Yeah, and it, what you say about the strikeouts you know, are, are true. I, I remember... Not, don't be that guy, but I can remember when strikeouts used to be an event. <laughs> you know, yeah. really, I can remember strikeouts were almost the equivalent of a pitcher's a pitcher's double. They were an event, and now it's it. It seems like there's um, there's a lot more. Hey, Joe, I've I've always wanted to ask somebody who has been around the Red Sox this question: um, When the curse of the Bambino was broken, how did that change in your mind? how Red Sox fans viewed the team and just the whole culture around the team. How how did that change it? it? I think it changed it dramatically, Kevin, uh, because uh, before, you know, I came from Cleveland uh, where I did Cleveland TV and finished sixth place every year in those days. And I didn't quite understand the mentality of the Red Sox fan because they had a chance to win year after year after year. And we're competitive. And uh, they hear the woe is me. Where was I when uh, the ball went uh, through Buckner's legs or uh, Bucky Dent hit the home run and all of these uh, near misses? Uh, I think it changed that because fans tended to relax. They didn't have to tell you all the uh, events of, mm-hmm. and place themselves where they were when the tragedies happened. Uh, from a baseball standpoint, and I think they relaxed. Uh, they didn't boo as much, and uh, I think that uh, it really changed their whole outlook on things. And then to win four in 15 years uh, really was the case as well. Uh, now when they lose, I don't think it's quite as painful as fans because they do have those four world championships this century behind them. Joe, is this a successful year for the for the Red Sox when the season's over and – you and the media and and Boston start talking about the team and, and, you know, what they need to do like we do here in Blue Jay land. Is it a good season? Are you guys going to start with that and say, you know, the Red Sox had a good season. They have a lot to build off of. I think so in many ways, uh, Kevin, because they finished under 500 the last two years, finished in last place. Uh, Thanks to Toronto, they won't finish in last place and they have a chance of a winning record. They're one over now with, uh, what, five games to play. But I think they will look at the development of the young players, the continued emergence of Jaron Duran into a star who's got, what, 46 doubles and 14 triples and steals uh, some 33 bases. Uh, Don Raphael, a great uh, center fielder who can also play second and short very well. He's got 15 homers, over 70 RBIs batting ninth. They'll look at him as a big success, even though... uh, The strikeouts were there. And uh, the young pitchers, up and down, uh, Tanner Houck didn't get much run support. Uh, He pitched well last night for five innings. Cutter Crawford, 10 and 15, but he pitched a lot better than the numbers. Uh, If he can only keep the ball in the park a little bit more, where he gave up 33 homers. And uh, I think that we'll look at some of those things, plus the optimism about the emerging stars. Roman Anthony 
has been voted the number one prospect in all of minor league baseball and outfielder who has great strike zone knowledge uh, and discipline, doesn't strike out, can run and hit for power. Uh, Marcelo Meyer, a shortstop, they drafted number one, who uh, had some back issues this year, but went healthy. He projects to be a big league star. Another kid named uh, Campbell, who came out of Georgia Tech, not much was expected, but he's tearing up double A AA and triple A. And if they can get a couple of pitchers, starting pitchers at the top of the rotation, which is a tall task indeed, uh, you know, they can be very competitive next year. Joe, who was your most memorable Red Sox personality that you ran into, either worked with or you know covered or got to spend time with? And what would you, if you had to give one word of advice to, to younger aspiring broadcasters, whether it be play-by-play, analysts, whatever, what would, what would that advice be? Well, as far as uh, players go, it's Pedro Martinez is one of the most intelligent uh, and uh, colorful players I've ever been around. And the same goes for David Ortiz, Mm -hmm. who mixes so well with fans, in addition to all the dramatics of the walk-off hits. Uh, Roger Clemens, uh, very, very special. Uh, 220 strikeout games, 10 years apart. Uh, I'm privileged to broadcast every single one of his 192 Red Sox wins. Uh, Mo Vaughn, a great clutch player and a great community leader. Uh, and I have other favorites, too, uh, who not were not necessarily big stars like uh, Brian Daubach and Trot Nixon, mm-hmm. solid players. But, you know, that, and Rich Hill and Jackie Bradley. Jackie's the best outfielder I've ever seen defensively. And uh, it's a long list. Right. Uh, right. As far as young broadcasters, the first thing I would tell them is learn to speak Spanish. I will help you immensely because uh, the best players in the world come from the islands. And uh, I think that's essential. I wish I had a better grasp of it. I would also tell them to read the history of the game as much as they can, to study the game, to know the rules, and to play as long as you can. Uh, Some of us were not good enough to play very long, uh, but I think it's very important that, that you have those experiences so that you can realize what's going through a player's mind. Yeah, Joe, you've been around a lot of great players, and and you. When Jeff was asking you that question, I was thinking about you and calling some of Aaron Judge's games when the Red Sox are playing the Yankees. And mm-hmm. I just want to get your thoughts on what you think of Aaron. You know, he's he's. We talk about Otani being a unicorn. So is that guy. I mean, his size. Everybody, you know, tries to not let him beat them, and he still does it. Like, you know, just what's your thoughts on him? And do you think we'll ever see another Aaron Judge? Well, you never say never, but he's certainly very rare what he does at his size, uh, and he can play center field now. Uh, he can throw. I mean, he's really uh, a five-tool player. Uh, the power is awesome. To watch him miss hit a ball and it goes out of the park is just amazing. And it's not only at the short porch at right field at Yankee Stadium. And uh, and he hits in the clutch. I mean, he's he's such a menacing figure at the plate. I. Uh, Last uh, two weeks ago, Sunday, he had gone 16 games to career high without a home run. He comes up with a bases loaded and hits a grand slam. <laughs> and only went about 10 rows back. That was the upset. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he and Atani both, I mean, this is this is a special age for great, great players. Uh, the likes of whom come along, maybe not even once a generation. Joe, listen, it was really good of you wonderful. to join us today. Again, congratulations on a uh, on a wonderful career. Yeah. And uh, enjoy your time off, my friend. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be touching base again at some point too, soon. Thanks well, for doing thanks. this. Thanks for coming on, Joe. We'll have to get back to Toronto off, and it's a wonderful place. Absolutely. Thanks, Joe. Be well. Thank you. That's Thank great. you, Joe. Take care. That's the great Joe Castiglione, uh, who has covered the Red Sox been the voice of the Red Sox for over four decades, uh, and the Red Sox will uh, have a uh, ceremony to honor his career uh, prior to the final regular season game uh, this Sunday. Uh, His 42-year tenure is the longest of any play-by-play announcer in franchise history, and as as Joe mentioned, uh, in July he was given the Ford C. Frick Award, which is presented annually by Cooperstown. Uh, for excellence in broadcasting and certainly a worthy recipient. And further to Joe's point about the young players coming up. But for the Red Sox, Baseball America's latest rankings, 
four Red Sox play, uh, prospects in the top 25. Yeah. Now, again, they're going to be rankings a handful. Are rankings are rankings. But they can find some pitching. Yeah. I mean, they, those are, and those four are position, they're position players. Seems like they need a closer, too. Like, you know, it seems like, yeah. it sounds like, anyway, they're in the mix for Corbin Burns going into the offseason. Like, I wonder what you, they would do with it. At one point, there was talk about Tanner Houck, Tanner Houck closing, and I don't. Yeah, maybe. I mean, he, he would have to sort of simplify what he's trying to do and, and the mindset and can his body handle take, it. And, yeah, I don't know if I'd want to take him. Yeah, I mean, you know, guys that can give you five-plus innings don't grow on trees. No. And I would think sooner or later they're going to be in win mode. Like, they, you know, they got a third base and they've dropped a lot of money on and Tristan Costa looks like he's for real playing oh, first. Man. Like, they got their they got their center fielder. That's their little core, right? You know, and, and what's Trevor's story going to add to the mix? And, you know, that guy, that experience, if he can stay on the field. So they've done a nice thing. They, they do got I, some things. I, I was watch, watching them yesterday and looking at their lineup and, and trying to kind of do a deeper dive. they got some nice players, even a Brady. They like, they've got, got a, some nice, just some nice pieces. They lead baseball in errors uh, with 111. How do they fix that? I mean, I don't think that's an easy fix. It's just like you show up one day and start catching the ball better. Well, so I'm not sure how you do that. I think, I, I think having Trevor's story back in your infield probably will help that uh maybe i mean he ain't know, the greatest I, I, I if he so. plays shortstop or a little no the arm yeah, second I, like it's like you, i don't you know are right you yeah are right I, don't, I just that. don't think that's an easy fix so you're gonna have to make up for it somewhere which probably would say strikeouts from the bullpen seems like they make a lot of outfield, outfield mistakes which really which that kind of thing really kind of you know as 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 Buck always says, I mean, a mistake in the outfield usually costs you a run. Right? You can make a mistake in the infield, you maybe get out of it with a double play, but a mistake in the outfield more often than Yeah, not you got to remember, too, Duran gets the balls that most wouldn't. I mean, he's a he's an athletic freak, which, yeah. you know, which will allow him just by speed making up, you know, deficiencies in getting good jumps and running good routes. And, you know, sometimes the communication that balls that he would get to is a little off because of that reason. And, you know what they don't have in the infield. They do mm-hmm. have some youth in key spots, right? The, you know, the shortstop that was story out. He's a young guy. Obviously, the center fielders are still a young guy they trying to make his way. Yeah, they got they got a bunch of young guys in some big time spots. That yeah. communication, taking control of what's happening on the field, is a big deal. Just making the routine play. It is odd that Cora being their manager, they lead baseball in errors. Now you know khakis will roll their eyes at the error thing and say it doesn't matter. But you when would, you lead baseball in it, it matters. Yeah, and and when you you know, especially when you're a team that is on the cusp of contention. I mean, you do if you're the Red Sox, you want to clean that up because you want to con- you should be able to contend next year. I would think if they sign wanna... Corbin Burns, they're in the mix. They're in the hunt. I mean, you could argue with the way they hit now, with the way they manufacture runs by the stolen base. They're seventh in baseball in yeah. stolen bases. It's like you saw last night. I mean, they're putting so much pressure on that. You know, with Bassett, just because some of the times he's not real good. You know, especially when. That roost closed, and he's pushing that button as many times as he's pushing it last time. And Kirky, you know, has been better at throwing. Give him credit last night. He looked quicker. Pop times and all those things are getting a little bit better. But I think they're – what's the identity for the Red Sox? You know, most of the time it's been starting pitching and thumpers. Yeah. What is it now? It's almost uh, – It's a little all over the place. It's all – I was, I was going to say, if, if you ask me right now, it's almost athleticism. Yeah, but youth. I, but, and youth. But yeah. I, I don't know what's their identity. Now, I, you know – it's kind of interesting here. I, I didn't didn't realize this. So Brian Bayo will start tonight. That'll be his thirtieth start of the year. So he'll join Cutter Crawford has made thirty two starts. Tanner Houck thirty starts as the first homegrown trio of Red Sox starters to make thirty plus starts in a season since eighty seven. That was Clemens, Hurst, and Nipper. So it the the thing I think about the Red Sox, and this is why a guy like Corbin Burns to me adds that identity. Because those three guys, Crawford, Houck, and Bale, that's two, three, and four in a good rotation. If I can get Corbin Burns to be at the front of that, then maybe I can start hanging my hat on, on my pitching a little bit. Yeah, their competition with the Blue Jays, too. Blue Jays, Blue Jays need a bullpen. So the Red Sox. Yeah. Like, they're, there's competition running all over the place here. It's not going to be the easiest of all seasons when you're trying to rebuild things. Like the Jays. You know, the Red Sox are sort of in the mix. But I think the Red Sox got to step forward because of the way their offense looks. Like, you you know, you got one, two, three that you feel confident that can help you carry the load for quite some time. You, you, and you can put pressure by the stolen base, I, which is a big deal, too. I, I think you can make a case that 
the Red Sox have been the biggest positive surprise in this division this year. I, if you had said to me the Yankees were going to be in first place, I go, okay, I can see that. They got Judge and Soto. But I honestly didn't see the Red Sox even still being mathematically in it at this time of the year. I didn't expect to see yeah, that. Yeah, now, let's be I honest. I think the Blue Jays have helped a lot with that, right? The the way the Blue Jays have not right. stepped up. And but, you know, again, they're... Taking the bull by the horns. Yeah, and, again, though... You know, the Blue Jays are 20 and 30 in the American League East. Like, it's not been the best of years in division. And that's sort of where it starts, right, is how you stack up against the teams in your division. They ain't been good. Yeah. So that's not it. That, you know, that's helped a little bit when it comes to the Red Sox. It's a little bit of a surprise. So the Rays, you know, staying around 500, actually playing some meaningful games. Mm -hmm. You know, they basically traded their entire team. That's the thing, right? Why are the Rays, the, the, even Atlanta, able to do this le losing key pieces the Jays can? Explain that to me. Can you explain that to me? I was thinking about that on the right end today. The, the Atlanta lost half their team. Well, They're in it. The Rays are still in it. They traded halfway well, the half their team away. One of the reasons Why? that one of the reasons the Braves are still in it is they have a general manager who makes moves when someone gets injured. He he fills in. Now, does he get the same guy? No. But I guarantee you this, Alex Anthopoulos wouldn't have waited six weeks after losing his closer and his and his main eighth inning guy before making a move. He I would just, not he would not have waited or tried to or consider Adding Brandon Little and Tommy yeah, Nance's just, uh, move. Yeah, look, that's, I, that's the, I don't even know how you think different. about that because you look at the end of the season, we've said this, the team's going to get in with 85 wins. And you're the Blue Jays if you just tweaked a little when it comes well, to seventh yeah, inning on. But th this season gives you a chance at you, least. You could, have salvaged, you could have salvaged this season, I think, if you wanted It would have been to. more competitive. It would have been a little bit easier to watch, right? That That's the whole thing. You know, an entire season when you spend this much money. That's what it's about, right? It's about competing the entire season. I I mean, it seems odd to spend this much money on a team and basically let it die on the vine because you lost a what what does Garcia make? What was he making? Ten, eleven million dollars? You're spending two hundred and thirty, uh, twenty five million or whatever it is, and you you leave the team just kind of wither because you lost a couple of relievers like I, again it's look i i get what people people are saying jeff come on how many teams would lose two relief pitchers from the back end of the bullpen and contend you're right but i'll tell you this most teams that lost two pitchers at the back end of the bullpen in may i guarantee you they go out and try to add somebody to at least take a run at it that's what that's what concerns me that, and that's what will always puzzle me. And I don't know if we'll ever get an answer for that because it's the one thing this this front office has not been afraid to make trades. It's been it's not been afraid to bring in relievers to address the issues in the bullpen. There's and, some urgency with the pitching in the past, is your point. And, and for, for whatever for reason, whatever this, reason year. this year, I'd Yeah, I'd Yeah, I don't know. It was just, it, it was almost as if it was almost as if they just didn't feel that they either needed to do anything or or could do anything. I, I don't know what that. Yeah, I mean, I it's a lot. It's a lot of faith in the Pearsons and the Richards of the world. To you know, when that happened, and I was, I, I mean, doing some poking around and asking, and the same word I kept getting back is they'll have to. And I would the the question would be who's going to step up, and I would name off random names and. They would say they would have they'll they'll have to, and it was the Richards of the world in the ninth inning. We saw that how that went to Pearsons of the world, and you know, just guys that, quite frankly, you would never want most of the time in the eighth and ninth inning were being sort of put in that, but not because they wanted to, but because they had to, and they didn't really have anybody else. So that that's the thing. It's just I don't know. It's just I mean, I'll say this: I, I'll give the Blue, Jay, the Blue Jays Blatty credit Blatty for one too. thing. They do trust their process. They do think their process. Is they play tremendous. it out. They play. They, they let they, it play out. Yes. Now they they do trust their players. They believe in the process well, against is, those players. David Schneider is a prime example of that. If you if you don't believe it, just look at David Schneider's here. Like, <laughs> and listen to John Schneider talk about David Schneider on our show. Like, yeah, that 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 uh, is true. That's, that's all you that's need a good to point. Know. Chris yeah. Jimenez joins us. Joe Siddle as well. It's Blair and Barker on Sportsnet 590. The fan is sports. All right, welcome back to Blair and Barker. Uh, 7.07 tonight is the first pitch from the Rogers Center. Bowden Francis against Brian Bale. The Jays lineup is out. Springer, Lucas, Guerrero, Horowitz, Kirk, Barger, 
Clement. What are you looking at? Schneider, Floperfito. Just the, your your what facial you expressions. At? All I'm doing, I read the lineup out every day, and and I and, and I just like looking at your facial expressions because I know that you 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 so want to jump in and say something, but you won't. So oh. Vladdy is DHing Horwitz's at first. Uh, Schneider's Don't at, dare me. At, at second, and uh, yeah, David Schneider's playing second. Yeah, so it says here. Better double check. Do you think Spencer Horowitz is playing second? No, David Schneider's playing second. They're force feeding him. I don't mind that. They are. They're all in. They're 73 and 84. <laughs> uh, Vladdy was hitless yesterday, so he's still uh, on 194 hits. He'll get 200. He'll get three tonight. And uh, six, six hits in five games a lot, though, when you're trying to get him. He yeah, knows, he knows he yeah, needs yeah, it. yeah. That that's actually that's actually a good oh. that's actually a good point. Well, Paul does. No, that's a good point. No, I know. Yeah. I make quite well, a few of them. Well, five oh five. Started that Been whole on show. for an hour and an hour and five minutes. First, first timing. You made first a half point. hour of the show. I made a whole half hour. Good points. No, you didn't. Anyhow, I wish we had one of those things like they have at presidential debates. You know where that you can measure people's response to each each statement. Ah, It'd be interesting to see what the response is. Yeah. Uh, just before we came on, the Detroit Tigers beat the Tampa Bay Rays. The Tigers are now a game and a half up. Half a game. Half a game. What did I say? Game and a half. Uh, they're half a game up on the Kansas City Royals. Uh, game and a half on the Twins. Game and a half on there the Twins. There you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, it's <laughs> going to come down to the final weekend, as we all predicted. And it's time now for our MLB Insider, brought to you by Miller Lite, Chris Jimenez, the MLB Network, former MLB catcher, joining us on Blair and Barker. Yes. Chris, thanks for doing this, man. Always always good to talk to you. Uh, yeah, uh, as we all predicted, it's coming down to Detroit and uh, Kansas City and Minnesota for a playoff spot. That's, I think, something we all had in our bingo card. Uh, yeah, just, just like we predicted. Just like we predicted. For, before we talk about those teams, though, I, I, I want to ask you about Cleveland. Because I really, I really want to go all in in Cleveland this postseason. Oh. I really do. But you're not gonna. But I don't know why. I don't. I feel, almost <laughs> feel as if I can't. Can you talk me into? Uh. I have enough people telling me why I shouldn't go into it. <laughs> Tell me why I should go all in in Cleveland. Uh, well, I understand your sentiment, but. I'm not going to agree with you because I'm going to tell you why you should go all in. Okay. The Cleveland mm. Guardians this postseason. And it has to do everything with their bullpen, which, by the way, happens to be the best in Major League Baseball by quite a long margin, to be completely honest with you. Almost half a run better ERA standpoint uh, than the next best team, which is the Milwaukee Brewers. How often have we seen managers in Major League Baseball go to their bullpen as like, right out of the gate? Right? It's the first sign of trouble mm -hmm. from a starting pitcher. It's immediately bullpen time. Terry Francona, Cleveland's former manager, made that extremely popular. Actually, it was made popular before that with the Kansas City Royals in 2015. They right. had a great back end of their bullpen, and they went heavy after those guys really, really early in certain games. And I think that's a main reason you could think or at least maybe get behind the fact that Cleveland could make a really good run at this thing. It's not just a three-headed monster back there. There's legitimately six guys that Stephen Vogt could deploy at any point in time that could get the job done. So if you get a starter that can get you into the third, maybe the fourth inning, which I feel fairly confident they will have three guys that should be able to get you through one time in the lineup, maybe two uh, in regards to you know some other guys in that roster, but it's bullpen time after that. The way the off days line up, this bullpen has a chance to be utilized extremely aggressively and – stay rested throughout the first, at least the first and second round of the playoffs. Yeah, I give you that. Steven could go, win in doubt, go to the pen, right? That's my biggest strength. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die on that hill. I, my that's question right. would be, can they go on the road and hit enough homers? I think that's the thing, right? That's what you have to do in the playoffs. Do they have enough thump in their lineup to do it? Yeah, I think that's a fantastic question, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. that I will say this. They have two guys that have had 30-plus homers, 100-plus RBIs currently in their lineup. That's Josh Naylor and Jose Ramirez, who's probably – the most unheralded, unheralded player in Major League Baseball at this point. But they got other guys that can swing the bat a little bit too. Uh, let's not forget Lane Thomas. Since he's come over, he's been on mm -hmm. fire in the month of September, has really had a fantastic month at the ball out of the ballpark. That's not necessarily how their team's built, though. Yeah, they can hit homers. They can drive the ball out of the ballpark if they get certain guys up in certain situations. 
What's going to help them, though, is being aggressive on the base paths, which is something that they've done consistently throughout the season when they've had guys on base. And they've hit almost better than anybody in Major League Baseball with runners in scoring position and two outs. So I feel like, yeah, they have the capability of running into a homer, and obviously that's a big deal come playoff time. But their ability to scrap you know, at-bats and runs together and have big crooked number type innings is what's going to make them a deep run, in my opinion. Yeah, I think the American League's wide open, Chris. I think to your point, anybody gets hot at the right time, you're handing the ball to those six guys instead of one or two gives you a better chance. I, I, no doubt. Yeah, I wonder, is do you think, say, the Tigers are going to get in? It looks that way. Should we be, I guess, if you're a fan base of any of those America, other American League teams, should they be scared of the Tigers? Well, I'll tell you what, I would be. <laughs> yeah. The way they have been playing lately, uh, best you know record from, I think, like August 15th on. Mm -hmm. uh, they've had the best record in Major League Baseball, have gone from 11 games back in a wild card for a while, the third and final wild card spot, to now I think they're a game and a half over Minnesota. You said in a half game currently over uh, the Kansas City Royals for that second. They're in now the second wild card spot, which crazy. is crazy. Uh, they really only have one legitimate starter, and boy, is he a doozy. Uh, and Tarek Skubal, he's most likely going to win the American League Cy Young this year, and deservedly so, but their bullpen is pretty sneaky as well. And to me, I don't feel like you can count teams out that are hot right now, right? It's all about, it's sometimes, or I would say probably 60, 75% of the time, the best team in Major League Baseball doesn't necessarily win the World Series. It's the hottest team. And if you look at the hottest team in baseball right now, it's the Detroit Tigers. Do I think they can win the World Series, or would I pick them to win the World Series? Probably not just because of the lack of depth in their starting rotation, but I wouldn't put it past them the way they have been playing lately. Mm -hmm. You know, you talked about Jose Ramirez. He's what? He's three home runs away from being 40-40. Right. Which, I mean, there's another guy who's been getting a lot of... A lot of I uh, bet nobody would know that credit. unless they looked the numbers up. Right? I, listen, oh, I, yeah. right. you're absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, Kevin knows I've... When, when the rumors were out there that the Jays were trading for Jose Ramirez, I was... I was I almost brought a jersey because he, I he's he has been one of my favorite Must players watch. for years. I love watching yeah. Jose Ramirez play. Of course, he's he's still he's still in Cleveland. But beyond the fact that he's in Cleveland, why do people not? It I don't think it's that people don't give him enough credit. I think everybody gives him credit for being a good player. He is, but I mean I think he's a superstar. I don't think he's a good player. I think he's one of the game's superstars. I absolutely agree with you, and I think because. You know, playing in Cleveland has some effect on that, right? If he was playing in L.A. or in Toronto or one of the New Yorks, either one, American or National League, he would be getting significantly more notoriety from a national standpoint. But I think the fact that the media market isn't as big as it is in other places, he doesn't necessarily get that, like the United States type attention, right? Or entire Major League Baseball type attention as he does more locally or at least just in the Midwest. Everybody knows he's a great mm -hmm. player. He's an even better human being, and I think it's it's just a matter of time, truthfully, that he really starts to gar garner the recognition. You're going to look at him in five or six years when he retires, and we're going to say, wow, like we just watched the Hall of Famer and yep. we didn't even really know it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I do. That's no question. I know whenever Cleveland was in spring training and they were talking about trading him to the Blue Jays, it was, you know, who you here to see, and it was like, and I was telling Jeff and – Jeff got all excited. I do want to ask you about the Mariners and how we should talk about the Mariners here down the stretch because, you know, they, they are making a run at it. They got a little fight in them. Like, offensively now, they're, you know, they're doing some things. They're getting some big hits yeah, when they're supposed yeah. to. Their center fielder's actually looking like a, an MVP. Like, like a superstar. <laughs> absolutely. Like, you know, finally showed up to the party, that kind of thing. End of the season, are we going to say – yeah, almost. Or are we going to say, what a waste? Like, look at that rotation, what a waste. How do we oh, talk man. about them? Yeah, I mean, both of those are great, great thought processes because I feel like it's almost one of those situations where it's too little too late. Now, I don't want to completely count them out because surprisingly enough, the Kansas City Royals have been on a seven-game losing streak. I didn't have that one on my bingo mm -hmm. card either because mm -hmm. there are times this year, in particular against the Cleveland Guardians, that I felt like they were the best team in Major League Baseball, let alone the American League or the American League Central. Um, I think they have the pitching to do it. They've had a few injuries at the back end of their bullpen, but their offense since Vinny Pasquantino has gone down with a broken hand has really been non-existent. And that has been one of the major factors for their middling play here the last, you know, three or four weeks. Uh, but I, I think if there is a team out there that 
right now on the outside looking in that can make a legit run at this thing the last week of the season, it has to be the Seattle Mariners. I mean, we're talking about the envy of the league in regards to young, controllable pitching, starting pitching. Their bullpen has been fantastic this year. Maybe not as good as it has in the past, but still very, very serviceable. It's been that offense. And you you, you said it, Julio Rodriguez, it, to me, is the kind of the linchpin that makes that offense go around. I hope it's not too little too late because – Boy, if they were to sneak into the playoffs as the third and final wild card mm -hmm. team, I think you'd see a lot of national pundits potentially pick them to go to the World Series just because of that pitching staff. And again, when you get in the playoffs, when you get in these big time scenarios at the end of September, good pitching always beats good hitting. I just hope that they're not too far out. I know it's two games and that's not insurmountable, but with six games left to play, you're starting to think like, okay, they got to win every single game from here on out and hope for a little bit of help the rest of the way as well. Yeah. You know, one of the things we've seen this year in baseball is we've seen rookies come up and make a major impact. And last year in the World Series, of course, Texas got some, got a lot of good performance out of yeah, out of out of a rookie. Did. Uh, I want to ask you about Kyle Manzardo and what what changed between the time he went back to the minors and when I think he was called up in September first or September second, and he appears to be. I wouldn't say a different player, but he appears to be a lot he, from what he we've is. seen. He's more comfortable, it seems to me. For sure. Yeah, and he's gone out publicly and said that too, that, you know, going down, it allowed him to kind of reset himself. He said the first time up here, he was trying so hard to kind of almost be somebody that he wasn't. And, you know, as a rookie, anyway, speed the things speed up on you really quick. You've not faced a lot of these guys. You're almost looking for the perfect pitch. And he found himself down in the count nine times out of 10. And it just didn't look like he was comfortable in the batter's box. Like he was searching for the pitch that he should hit and to try, try to be the guy that I think everybody thinks he has the chance to be in Cleveland. And when he came back, number one, he's pulling the ball more, which is a significant difference from what we saw from him the first stint in Major League Baseball. But I think he's absolutely confident. And to me, that's everything. When you're a young player, you're confident in that batter's box you've now kind of had a little bit of a rapport against some of these guys that you're facing now for the second or third time, potentially it's easier to kind of formulate a game plan up there. And also knowing that you don't have to be the guy that everybody on this team relies on. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of those guys littered through that lineup. He can go out there. Steven votes had him in the two hole the last maybe eight to 10 days. And that seems like it could be a really good spot for him. Jose Ramirez with a little bit of protection there. He's getting some balls to hit but he's not afraid to pull the baseball now. And I think that's a huge reason he's having a lot of success in September. Chris, you know what I played? It was, uh, I was always told that you can make a good living off of hitting the fastball. If I can fight off the breaking ball, if I can take the strike to ball, breaking ball, I can live to fight another day to get another heater. You think you could teach a young person just to hunt fastball and be successful and make a good living at the big league level doing that? You know, in today's day and age, that it really appears to be so hard. You look at it and you're like, gosh, guys have never thrown harder. They've never thrown consistently as hard as they have, right? We've seen Paul Skeens go out there from a starting pitching standpoint and run it up to 100, 103 there in the sixth or seventh inning. You would think that guys would be able to hit a fastball and be able to do it consistently. But I feel like with today's day and age, the way the game has trended, especially now in the playoffs, Come playoff times when bullpens are used more prevalently than they possibly are in the regular season, what do guys come out of the bullpen and do? Usually they can spin the crap out of the yeah. baseball. So I feel like as as much as that was the way it was when you came up, when I came up mm -hmm. even, it was if you couldn't hit the fastball, you weren't going to be in this league for very long. I feel like guys are having more success now, learning how to hit that breaking ball and being successful in hitting that breaking ball, which ultimately – will get you more fastballs, right? Yep. The problem I see is, is so many guys are sitting breaking balls so often that when you do get a fastball, it could be 90 to 92, which there aren't many of those left around in the league. But when you do see one, it looks like the guy's throwing 105 because you can tell somebody's obviously sitting soft in that scenario. I just don't feel like we have enough guys that throw enough fastballs coming out of bullpens now to be really 100% sitting fastball because you may not see one the entire at bat. Yeah, it seems like hitters don't know that either. Just look at league average, right? It's like 244. Like, they just, right. they, yeah, they just don't know how to attack it. We see that with the Blue Jays hitters all the time. They look in between on fastballs and fastball counts. Right. Almost like they're not looking for it. I'll put you on the spot. Best two teams in baseball, what team wins the World Series today for you? Oh, man, that is a great question. Um, if I had to choose a team truthfully to win the World Series today, 
Uh, it's probably the San Diego Padres. Oh, you know, they're playing really, really good baseball right now. They have a three game series that could be for the division that starts tonight in LA. LA has currently a three game lead over the Padres. If you're looking at good bullpens and managers that know how to manage bullpens, it's Mike Schultz got to be at the top of that list because what they did and remade their bullpen at the trade deadline, they've turned this thing into an absolute weapon that is four or five deep. They've got great starting pitching. And trust me, this offense is one of the most electric offenses, especially with Fernando Tatis Jr. back. There's some game changers in this offense, and it's not an easy offense to have to navigate if you're an opposing team. And when we see them get hot, Talk about the, I think they have the best. They started off 50 and 50. And right now I think they're 90 and 66 is their record. Yeah. So they've only lost 16 games out of the last, you know, however many they've played. That's incredible to me. They've won 90 games and they legit have a chance to win if they can sweep in LA, which will be difficult to do, but they have a chance to win this division. And if they do that, they're going to get that first round by. And if they somehow get that first round by, you line up that pitching, that bullpen's fully rested. That could be a really, really scary. Yeah, what a great story. I hope it happens. Like, that that would be so much fun to talk about. We always talk about the same teams all the time, right? It's always the Dodgers. And now that the Padres are actually in it and playing meaningful series at the end of the season, it's actually kind of cool. So I hope it happens. I'm in the camp that I hope it happens because I like rooting against the Dodgers. It's kind of fun. Yeah. 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 Me too. (laughs) It's easy, I guess. It It is. is. Yeah. I have no problem doing that. Chris, thanks for doing this, man. Yeah, it's wonderful. You're very welcome. You thanks, Chris. Well. Take See care. You, man. Enjoy. Yep. Take care, guys. Take care, Chris. That was our MLB Insider brought to you by Miller Lite. Tastes like Miller time. That was Chris Gimmon as uh, the uh, ML- MLB Network radio host, former MLB catcher with Cleveland, Seattle, Tampa Bay, Texas, the Cubs in Minnesota. Yeah. Experience. You know, you can't teach that. I, it's, it's an interesting topic about the the fastball thing. I, yeah. I've been thinking about that a little bit. Maybe we, we might be too hard on the Blue Jays when it comes to hitting the fastball. Like I, the more I think about it, the more you look around. The elite offensive teams in baseball are good at doing it. And there's everybody else. And everybody else seems to have the same kind of issues the Blue Jays are having. And you can lump the Blue Jays, obviously, in there with everybody else. I just don't. That's what I said. It, it's like your talent has to be so good when it comes to no matter how hard you throw, I'm going to beat you to the spot. Like, you got you got no chance in a fastball count of throwing that thing by me. How many teams do you say that about? It's the top-end teams that we always talk about. And yeah. that's the reason why they're the top-end teams is because you have to pay Buku's money to get guys in there that can do that. Maybe, maybe, maybe I hate to, I hate to, but maybe we've been a little too hard on the Blue Jays when it comes to why the fastball, why not the fastball, what are you looking for in 2-0 counts. Maybe, maybe it's just they throw so hard. Maybe it's just tough a lot of the times, even though you're sitting on it to hit it. I guess what it is. They don't hit enough home runs. I, 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 How many I, people I, I can't get? Put it, I, I can't put it in Chris other way. Chris was saying pulling velocity in the air. How many dudes you know can do that? That's all consistently around like, baseball or? consistently like again i get a 20 98 mile an hour fastball center cut how many dudes can pull that in the air and slug with it it's it even down the middle like you got everything's got to be right because of how hard they throw how how much it moves at the end just how they're setting it up you know it's not they didn't get 20 because they're missing with their heater they're getting 20 because it's tunneling a slider off the 98 like it's there's just so much in between mentally of how you're trying to attack a certain guy it's just not go up there and i'm gonna look right down the middle for your best good old number one and when i get it i ain't gonna miss it i and then on top of it most of these dudes are right-handed and you're right-handed which is not the easiest thing to do either being mechanically sound on 98 is not the easiest thing i don't know i mean i I don't want to back trail on, on what I've been saying about hitting the, the fastball. I still think they need to get better talent in here. I'm going to continue to say that. One through four needs to be better. It just does. I can fill in the blanks after that with whoever you want to fill in the blanks with. You just got to get dudes in here at the top of the order who can hit velocity. Do damage on velocity. Right now, they just don't have enough of it. That's all. That's why I say maybe we're too hard on the team wide with the Blue Jays when it comes to that part of their game. Well, I, I think it too hard on the players. Yeah. Well, that it, I think it. I think it's. I, yeah. As you would say, you know, if you can't hit it, you can't hit it. 
Yeah, again, I get back to that. And, and, and I mean, a, and that's not, a big word. That's not your bold face and can't. That's not a, a but that's word, not a man. reflection on the players as much as the people who are putting the team together. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I can't tell you know you can't really talk about that because you don't see that on an every, everyday basis. You only see what they're not doing. I see Horowitz hitting in a cleanup spot. Horowitz need to look like a cleanup hitter. Meaning, I get a two zero fastball and a fastball count down the middle. I should hit that thing to the moon. Does he? No. He hits that single to left field. That's the point, right? It's like. It's just when Chris was talking there, that's why I wanted to ask a former catcher that. If I'm just telling a young person that's starting in baseball, this is never going to work, Jeff. This ain't going to change at the highest level. This is how they're getting dudes out. Like, it works. And it don't cost them a ton of money. And I can work through arms because all these arms know what it takes to get there and get paid at it and stay there long enough to make enough money that when you're done doing it, I can deal with the hurt arm because I don't have to work anymore. Uh. It's that kind of thing. I just wonder, like, I, I again, and, and how much talent cost that can hit it, that can just say, man, you got no chance of throwing this thing. That's why he brought up the pod race and the middle of the order and the things they do to fastballs. I, that's all. That's no, like I, it's I still, but I, I think you're, I, I don't think you should backtrack because I get back to something you've said, and it's very true. I look at the Jays lineup. I look at the opposing team's lineup and not, I just ask myself, who would I rather have in each position? And other than the dude at first base or third base, depending on where Vladdy Jr. is playing, very seldom do I find myself saying, well, the Jays got a big edge there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's some teams, frankly, where George Springer's defense is enough to, okay, but other than that, um, it's a challenge. It's a challenge, and and you said it. And, and that been, that is you've been saying this. The that, Rays can say they when they're right, they're the best pitching when, team in baseball in now, my mind. The Rays threw, they threw fastball seventy percent fastball, seventy seven percent fastballs in three games. Absolutely. What that's, are they telling? Because you know that you know that's a Rays. They're the race. telling you what you need to work on and go out and get in the off season. That's the point, right? Yeah. Are they willing to spend the money for dudes that can do it? The Rays are that's like the thing. The Rays will find a scab and they will pick at it and pick at it and pick at it and pick at it until you put a bandage on it to do something. Like that that was and that was courtesy of our, not, of of uh, of our telecast uh, last night. That blew me away. The MLB average this past weekend, the MLB average was fifty five percent fastballs. Yeah, seventy seven percent fastballs. The race through in three games. Now, okay, their pitchers have good fastballs. Most but dudes in baseball do not. Most dudes in baseball do exactly seventy seven percent. That is literally you can't hit it. That's that that's what that is. Yeah, you can't hit it. I don't think a whole bunch of game planning goes into that. You yeah. can't hit it. Yeah, it's the inability to make in-game adjustments, too. I Look, I, I'm not trying to backtrack on this because they're going to need a couple of them dudes to be surprises next year. They ain't going to go out and, and, you know, revamp their entire lineup. They're not going to go out and add four or five they, position they're, players. They're, they're not going to happen. They'd be uh, to get one. <laughs> but it's – I just I, – I don't know. How do you consistently do it? Is it an approach that in the offseason you say nothing but go home and work on it? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, is, it a, is, it a, is it an organizational thing where I I'm overthinking you, it so much that I have to get in curveball counts? I don't know. What's a curveball count? I mean, I've seen dudes throw three, two breaking balls with the bases loaded. What's a curveball count? I, that's the point, right? I, I just don't know how. I mean, they're, they're a decent breaking ball hitting team. Does that mean they have slider bat speed or does that mean their approaches off the field are telling them to go up and look for that? That's the thing I think you have to be real about with your evaluations. Figure that out in a hurry if you have any chance of whatsoever turning this thing around. I've said this. They got they got 50 home runs your finger crossing with the dude that plays short and the dude that plays first or third, whatever position he's going to play. You got to find 130 more in the offseason. Where are you getting? And a lot of them got to go. Dudes that can go line to line, them don't grow on trees. You can count them on one hand. So you're thinking more about them dudes pulling velocity for homers. Where are you getting 130 at? Like I give you 15 from George. 
hitting in the six or seven hole. Where else are they coming from? Kirky gives you ten. That's a, he got he got five this year. Like I, like that's the point, right? So yeah. you're looking at sixty five. Now you're looking at another hundred and fifteen. You got to find in the off season. Every good team that's making a legitimate run at that thing and being a serious contender has got somewhere around 180 homers. Blue Jays going to have somewhere around 160. That ain't enough. And that's bottom end. 180 is bottom end. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the thing, right? And to do that, you got to be one of the better fastball hitting teams in the sport. Can they do it? Can they flip the switch that much in the offseason and go out and get enough talent to hide it? to get the dudes that are in there who have trouble hitting at other pitches that they can drive and do damage on. I, I'm not sure I know the answer to that. I mean, I obviously watch every single at bad these things. And then sometimes these two accounts are getting haters right down the middle. I, can I blame the player? Can I blame the, the, I don't know. I, that's the thing. And Chris just sort of shined a lot. That's what I wanted to ask a former catcher. If I'm teaching a young person, can that person make a good living at the highest level looking for one pitch? He seems to say no. So it's uh, some well, heavy I mean, lifting. It, it, That's it, all. Maybe it, once you hear it and you say it out loud, it's some heavy lifting to do. And then that seven, and then again, it, no matter when that good team shows it to you, and the Rays are a good team, they're having a down year, but they're going to be a real good team and they're going to throw things at you next year that you better get it ready. I, they just basically went, ah, shine the spotlight on everything that you need to go out and get in the offseason. 77% of the time, I don't think you can hit this. And ain't moving a ton. Here it is. That's pretty telling for me. Yeah. You know what I say all the time? Your opponent tells you what your weaknesses are. Uh, Joe Siddle is our Blue Jay Central Analyst on Sportsnet. Um, if you missed the, I guess we can call it news, uh, earlier today, the uh, Jays have uh, optioned Zach Pop to uh, spring training complex. I mean, where else is he going to go? Yeah, well, at the spring training complex. Would you be chapped if you were him? It's five days left. Yeah, I, well... Yeah, you know what? You after, talk about money. After you roasted you me. After chapped. you roasted me for Rowdy Tellez, I'm no comment. Huh. No comment. After you hammered me for standing up for Rowdy Tellez. Service time and two hundred grand is a little different. Anyhow, Joe Siddle joins us next. It's Blair and Barker on Sportsnet Five Nine. I still love you. You know that on Sportsnet Five Ninety, the fan and Sportsnet. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Blair and Barker. Well, our, uh, we, we, we've done some digging into uh, the mystery of Zach Pop. And, uh, well, Kevin did some digging into the mystery of Zach Pop, who has been sent down to the, to the Florida complex. And uh, Easton Luke has called up to replace him. And basically it comes down to the fact that uh, uh, there's, what, there's five games left in the regular season. Zach Pop was going to be down for a couple of days, and they wanted a fresh arm. So that is the... Reason why, although my guess is if he had an ERA of three and a half, he'd still be up here. Boy, you're good, Jeff. It is performance driven. Say it with me. Not the tri league, is it? Uh, when your no. ERA is pushing f almost six. Uh, Stay tuned, by the way. We do have tickets to give away to see the Blue Jays and Marlins. But uh, before we do that, it's our pleasure to be joined by Joe Siddle, Blue Jay Central yes. Analyst. Hello there, Mr. Siddle. Hello, gentlemen. How are we doing today? Oh, hey, we're we're doing September twenty fourth, twenty twenty four. How are you doing? <laughs> you and me both, all of us. <laughs> um, hey, uh, want to start out? I, I mean, you know, we were looking last night for the proverbial silver lining in the cloud. It's only one, and it was Alejandro Kirk. There it is, and um, yeah. and, and his performance last night. And I mean, all all kidding aside, for whatever reason, it seems as if with the increased workload that has come since Danny Jansen was sent packing. Kirk, Kirk he just looks better. I, I, I mean, it looks faster. Everything looks faster. I'm not talking about the infield hitter, the triple. It's just his reflexes behind the plate. He's throwing guys out. He, eh, are you, can you explain this to me? Like, I, you know, I know there are people that will say, well, Jeff, some guys get better with more work. But, with you know. I don't necessarily buy that with some guys. Some guys, it's true. Some guys don't get better with more work. As a matter of fact, you end up saying, man, I wish I could see less of this guy. 
that's not the case with Kirky. What are you seeing? Well, yeah, and it's interesting because, and I think in talking about Kirky over the last few years, we'd all agree that he seems to be the type of player that would prosper with a little bit less playing time, not so much wear and tear behind the plate on the body. We, I think we can all agree, like, he's a good hitter, right? I mean, he doesn't strike out much. He puts the ball in play. Might not be a big power guy, but when he's right, he gives you a very good at bat. He's a very good hitter. It's more what he does behind the plate. And, you know, who knows? Maybe maybe it's a big league experience. You know, he's got a few years under his belt now. I, I still think you've got to give people time to grow and learn. Maybe that's what's happening with him right in front of our eyes. Maybe he's growing and learning as an everyday big league player. Was he motivated by the move at the trade deadline, Danny Jansen leaving? Maybe. Maybe that's a little bit like, hey, this is my puppy now. I need to go show them that I can be the number one catcher. And, I mean, we know a number one catcher doesn't catch 140 games or anything. Right. But maybe he can be that 85, 90, 95, 100 guy, which is pretty full time. And remember, a silver slugger year a couple of years ago, when he was hitting, he can DH a lot, too. Now, Yes, he's on a heater right now, and that's great, but we've seen this before, right? Overall, the numbers are down for him again this year, and if it's going to be like that, you're not going to get too many DH at-bats from him. But let's hope that this is a positive for the Blue Jays and for Kirk that he's taking advantage of what looks to be a clear opportunity. Um, I don't know if you guys know. I don't know what they're going to do in the secondary catcher in the offseason, but I don't think that that's a position where I can go spend too much money on a free agent catcher because they've got so many other holes to fill with those dollars. After Chris's start last night, are you worried about him going into next season? No, no. I think you you just have to be, you expect what, what you're getting from him. I mean, the, he, these guys aren't getting younger, right? I think going into this season, we all had to agree that as good as the rotation was last year, it's going to be hard to replicate that. And, it was difficult for Gosman because of the way his season started with the shoulder soreness. And for Chris, it's been up and down. Rios is as good as his numbers, as good as he's been. He had a real wall in the middle there, but turning out pretty good. You can't expect these guys to keep getting better. What's Chris, 35 now? He's going to be 35 or 36 in spring training, I think. 36. So, 36. I don't want to say he is what he is, but what they've given you has been remarkable. Yeah. I, I said... When they started doing this, to me, I said, this is the smartest thing an organization could do, and it's probably one of the best things the Blue Jays did, is you lock up good, reliable starting pitchers. And by lock up means, guess what, it costs you a lot of money. But if I'm going to spend money, that's probably the first place I'm going to spend it. And, you know, put put Kikuchi in this rotation, too. Don't forget, he was here, too. I mean, those are four guys that 30 teams in baseball would take so it's a great way to begin your roster, and unfortunately, they had a lot of hiccups in many other areas. But for Chris, I, I expect him, you know, you go into next year, I mean, yes, each year you have to cross your fingers a little bit. So am I expecting injury or anything? No, he seems very durable. In terms of what you're going to get, I wouldn't expect it to get better next year, but he can still be a very reliable starting pitcher. Joe, I think you're saying score more runs. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> How loud. I yelled it, actually. Uh- <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that was the. Uh, I, I was going to say that that was the the understatement. The uh, understatement, understatement. I guess. Uh, yeah, score more runs uh, would help. Um, you know, Kevin's made a point all season long, and I know you guys have too on the on Blue Jay Central and on the telecast uh, about you know this team and its inability to hit the fastball. And, you know, during the telecast last night, they put a graphic up that showed that the Tampa Bay Rays have, uh, you know, know, on the weekend through 77% fastball at at the Jays. I mean, that that tells you what your opponents think of you, obviously. Is this, to your mind, Joe, just uh, they got the wrong players, they're getting the wrong advice, or it's just, you know, it's a philosophical thing that that just hasn't worked out for whatever reason this organization doesn't feel the need to get guys or talk to guys about hitting the fastball. Well, I think all fastballs are created a little differently too. So you can think of four seamers and sinkers. Um, Sometimes when you look numbers up, cutters are listed as fastballs. I don't like to include them as fastballs Mm -hmm. because I consider cutters like mini sliders, but then you've got 91, 92 mile per hour fastballs and you've got 95, 96 mile per hour fastballs and up. So I think they are two different animals, and I think there are two reasons why guys might struggle with fastballs. One can be simply the approach. You know, you're sitting soft, you're maybe looking spin and not getting to the heater. But I think in a lot of cases, it's mechanical. 
And when your mechanics aren't quite right and you're not giving yourself a chance, especially to get the velocity, because it's very different if it's 92 and if it's 97, but to get to the velocity, and we saw it on the weekend with uh, Baz and then with Taj Bradley, right? And you said it, Jeff, like, both of those guys, for as good a fastball as they have, they don't throw them a ton, right? It's not mm-hmm. like they're a 55, 60 percent but they did against the Blue Jays. So I think what they see is they see swing mechanics. And if you think of some of the guys, I did a breakdown on Lopo Chito on the weekend. And, I mean, Dalton Varsho is in this category as well. And we talked about their move to the baseballs, the load, and the movement in the hands before they actually fire. There's a lot going on before they actually fire. Well, when they decide to fire, and then they do. Those are two different moves, and it's, like, too late. And, I mean, we've been talking for two years now about Dalton Varsho's uh, struggles against high velocity, right? So, to me, that part of it's mechanical. That has to be changed if he's going to get to velocity. Um, you know, David Schneider maybe is a different animal because he's been scuffling with everything this year. It might not be a good example. But the guys that struggle with fastballs or struggle with velocity, to me, it's, it's mechanically that they have to be getting into their slot and behind the baseball because that allows space. You know, even when Vladdy was struggling, we talked in this regard. Now he's, he's fixed things a lot, and, of course, he's done it by hammering off speed in secondary pitches, the breaking pitches. But when he wasn't right, he was the same way. He was, his path was a little more steep to the baseball, and when you're steep, you're closing the distance to high velocity, and you're, just, you're asking for a broken bat. So I think oftentimes it's the mechanics of these swings, so they must – they might have to be addressed, and every hitter is different. I mean, we can go over 14 different guys now, but I, I, I use the names Varshu and Loperfido because those are the names that stand out to me right away as guys that have a lot going on back there with that movement once they decide to swing, and that's why they struggle to get the velocity. Uh, this Swanson, are you comfortable with him going into next season? Yeah, I mean, I like, I'd like to give him a mulligan this year. You know how relief pitchers can be fickle year to year. I mean, he was so good last year. And then, of course, we all know how this year started for him. And he just never recovered. I don't know if, you know, obviously the, the personal family tragedy that they had to deal with. But then also, I think he had to deal with some other things, guys, like whether, whether they thought maybe he was tipping his pitches again or whatever. That's a big thing for any pitcher. And it's an easy excuse to run to. But. I would just, I'm guessing Eric Swanson would just like to have a do over, just like a lot of other people for 2024. I, I think he's the guy that, when you're talking about shoring up your bullpen, I mean, aside from like a high, high end leverage guy, that's the kind of person you're looking for to go get. So he could rebound and be a fine piece of the bullpen again, just like anybody else. I mean, it's a crapshoot. And you've got to like, they found all these different arms that claim their arms off waivers. They'll probably do more in the winter. Hopefully they sign one or two that we think are solid year in and year out guys, but we know that's a, that's a dangerous business. Yes. Yeah. I wonder what you think about Yario Rodriguez. And if you think he can come up with an identity in the off season, that's the one thing for me, Joe, I saw, I was looking up his stats in his last start and it was like the fastballs in the zone, something around 20% of the time. Like it just seems like from start to start, it's something else. It's arm angle. It's, it's yeah. mechanical, it's mental, it's usage, it's location. I mean, it was like 80 pitches in, in four innings. Like, I just don't know what to think, right? He's an old enough guy to know what his routine is, and he's made 20 starts. What's your feelings about him? Do you think he can get a, an identity in the offseason? Kev, you know the first name that just came to mind when you were describing him? You say. You say Kikuchi in his first year. Yeah. I mean, it's a mere image almost when you're just describing him that way. So usage wise, first and foremost, he's going to have to figure out who he is. And I, we know that he came with a reputation that he can spin the baseball. So I don't think that's going away, but man, sometimes he just seems like a little bit too much. But then when you see him go to the fastball and he can't find the zone. So to me, that's like, you got to crawl before you can walk. You got to get your mechanics down and refine that delivery enough and whether I got a feeling Pete's going to be all over the hesitation stuff and just get a mechanically sound delivery, something smooth or something repetitive that he can be in the zone more with the heater. Cause he's got a good arm. I mean, when the fastball is good, we've seen it pretty good that with a couple of breakers and a splitter. I mean, the, the, the weapons seem to be there, but you've got to be in the zone more and it all starts with simplifying things and not delivery. And I'm sure that's something that they're going to be attacking this winter. Yep. Joe, really good of you to join us, man. Look forward to your work tonight. Thanks for this as always. Thanks, buddy. All right, guys. Have fun. Be well. That's Joe Siddle, our Blue Jay Central Analyst. Yeah, and and it's 
you know, one thing we know about Pete Walker is Pete has told us this. You know, Pete believes in letting the pitcher show him who he is before he starts making a whole bunch of suggestions. Um, the only question I have with this, Kevin, is this is a different guy. It's a guy who hasn't pitched much recently, and when he did pitch was in the bullpen, and now you're making him a starter. And it's it's basically you're asking him to do something he hasn't, or they asked him to do something he hasn't done in about two years, roughly. I don't know about that. I, I I mean, I wonder if that isn't if that wasn't a bit of a reach on the yeah, part, on see, the part of the Blue Jays. See, I think there's a lot of urgency going into the offseason. That's the difference between what they went through with you say and what they're going through with Yariel. There's some urgency going into the next season. And the three guys in the rotation when you say was going through this were younger, and you could count on them a little yeah. bit more going into next season. That's they're going to be a year older, mm-hmm. and you we've seen the struggles they've had when they've struggled. They've struggled like they. They're getting older. Like it just sometimes when you get older, it takes you longer. You know what? I, I will you say need this. more. You know what? I always remember the great line from Derek Jeter when someone asked him about. You know, he said he was thirty-eight years old, and he said, "Look, this is what thirty-eight supposed to look like." Basically, you know, I, I look like a thirty-eight-year-old player, and, and I, I see that a lot of times with with Gossman, especially. I mean, that's what it's supposed to look like when you've pitched all those innings. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think I, that's I, where the, it's just the way. that's where the urgency comes from, and that's when you drop thirty two million dollars on a guy, and you expect him to do things. That's why you gave him that amount of money and twenty starts, twenty one starts. I mean, you're gonna make one more start. That's not enough to go stop making that an excuse and say don't know how to get a routine and he hasn't done this in two years. I look, they got the best at their fingertips in the world. When are we going to stop using that as an excuse? That, that I think, is the thing, right? What he's doing on the mound with lack of an identity has nothing to do with his explain, routine. Explain, okay. Like the, explain, like, oh, oh, just, let me just, like he's let me a spinning first way. guy. He's a trickery guy. What's he'll, Bowden, he'll what's attack Bowden a guy. Francis's identity? Uh, fastball command. Okay. All right. And I got pinpoint fastball command. My split finger is going to feed off of that. I can throw the other two, the slow breaking ball and the slider when okay. I want to throw it because I've located my fastball. Yariel, what's his? Name one. That's the thing, right? He didn't have one. That's the point. He's 27. Honestly, and Yariel's identity is... Everybody well, keeps saying he's got stuff. Well, how do you see your stuff the only thing, when your fastball's in the zone 20% the of the time? The only identity I see from him is he's, is inefficiency. That's the only thing I keep. You, if you see Yeah, but me, that's you, not an identity. That's no, a weakness. No, but no, I'm saying that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's a that, weakness. That's what I'm saying. When you ask me what, what I think of... When I think of Yariel Rodriguez, the, the first thing that comes to mind is inefficiency, which is a weakness. Yeah, I think they suggested to you, say, hey, how about we try this? I don't think they're going to do that with Yariel. Here's what you do. This is what we see you're not doing. Does he this st- will make you better. So it's a, it's the hesitation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a consistent release. Consistent arm it's like Senator was talking about an right. offensive player having the same right. – you know, a swing over and over and over again. You only got so many in one at bat. Yeah. You got to get athletic as quick as you can. You got to see the ball longer. How do you do that? It's like Bo Bichette talking about eliminating the leg kick. He ain't doing that just to be doing it. He's doing it because he can get athletic quicker and he wants to get more hits because average matters to him. Yeah. And he don't think he can consistently do that year to year because he's getting a little older. He's went through some injuries, like underperforming. He feels like this is the best way to do it. Pitching ain't no different. How do I have the same release point over and over and over again? The great ones don't trick nobody. This stuff tricking me. Why would if you got all this great stuff? Why are you tricking me? I I mean I tricking saying. means counts go up and you pitch less innings and then I got to use a bullpen arm that nobody wants to see. You know the 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 guy <laughs> that the guy that I remember you know really fiddling around with his arm angle was Pedro and Pedro would do it when it was tired or when he would. But Pedro's different. Pedro's on a different hey, level. You went to hole like a. You went to. No, he would do that. I mean, if you watch, and Pedro will tell you, he. Would, I, mean, I know, but he would Pedro, much, yeah, Pedro but could I'm do saying, whatever he wanted to do. I'm saying it's the only guy I've seen do it because he's trying to go eight or nine innings. That's the difference, right? It's I get tired. My arm speed's not there. That's why when I see how do it I throw my change up? I wonder why he's doing it. Anyhow, um, we've been giving you the chance to because he's always done it. We've been giving you the chance to win Blue Jays tickets all season long here in Blair and Barker. All you have to do is text the correct answer to our daily baseball trivia right. question to 590-590. Do the opposite of what Jeff's done all day today. Kevin, what does that say? <laughs> Massage. No, just read it. Standard. Read the whole thing. Yeah. 
Standard massage and data rates may apply. Okay, standard message and data rates may apply. Our last question and answer was, this pitcher was a two-time All-Star and spent his entire career with the Marlins other than one injury-filled season with the Blue Jays. The answer was Josh Johnson. <laughs> Great stuff. But ish. Today's question is to win tickets to see that he did. Today's question is to win tickets to see the Jays and Marlins at the Rogers Center on September 28th. This slugger enjoyed his best years with the Blue Jays, but he was no slouch in Florida either as he hit 301 with 33 home runs and 115 RBI in his one season as a Marlin. Again, this slugger enjoyed his best years with the Blue Jays, but he was no slouch in Florida either as he hit 301 with 33 home runs and 115 RBI in his one season as a Marlin. Text the answer to 590-590 for your shot to win. See rules at sportsnet.ca slash 590. Standard massage and data rates I don't may know, apply. I don't know why you're reading out that RBI thing for an individual. Isn't that a team stat? I don't even know why you bring that up. I, I, I read I, what I, I'm I given. don't even know why you bring that up. I like, read what I'm given. Huh? I, I just read. I, I, I'm like that. <laughs> huh? I'm like that system quarterback. I just do the what the team system stat tells till me. the individual ain't getting it no more, right? That's what it is. It's that, that's that it's average. It fights about it's everything. Average, today. I do. I don't know why. I think you. I think you chat me a little with that earlier comment that you made. That I don't care about players. It's that's not that it's just started to fester. Well, it, just started to think about that. You know, huh? You just you. You, you know, the truth hurts. Occasionally, it does. You are unfair sometimes. Am I? You are unfair. Wow, three point two million dollars is unfair. Wow, how will he live? Get away, well, get to eat. Wow, that's not the. Point. I mean, it's, yeah, it is. It's the principle. Of it. It's like that. If he would have had an ERA of around three and a half, he would have stayed in the big leagues. We're talking about. Wow, Rowdy it's the Tellez. same thing. It's the We're same thing. Talking about Rowdy Tellez being it's the same thing with ditched. his whopping so, thirteen so the, homers and fifty RBIs hey, as a clean cleanup up hitter. In this team. Um. He could hit clean up. Anyhow, the Pirates got rid of him to save two hundred thousand dollars, which Kevin is. Now you would have done it too. Kevin is now convinced that's going to allow them to send to sign Anthony. Our Sultan producer shook his head when I said that. I yes. would not do that. You I would have done I it too. Would not, not because I'm chance. in the off season trying to maximize what my strength is with that starting pitching. That dude is unbelievable. Like I said, two hundred thousand dollars. How do I get some runners? Runners? Might buy me a testicle. Well, hey, pitch. maybe you that's get that's all it is. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. about Oh, that, that's that might, the, the dumb comment. $200,000 like, doesn't buy you much of anything. Rich, rich people don't like to give money away. That's why they didn't give the two hundred grand away. You can throw your no, hands you, in the air I, all I'm you want. Do a little dance if this you want. Goes, this goes it's back the same to your thing, point. Right? It's like, you said if you ask Rowdy, if you ask Rowdy Tullis, that's why I'm they sure didn't he'd give say, it to him. I'm sure he'd say that, that he doesn't need the 200000 No, he would say, again, you don't listen. You only hear what you want to hear. I said, he would say, I hit 13 homers and had 54 he RBIs. And that's why they brought me in here was to do better than that. So I can understand why they didn't. <laughs> not that not I'm liking it. That. Not that I like it. I can dislike it. But Pay the man. Perform that alive. You've Pay gotten the man. soft, dude. You're all mushy inside, aren't you? You used year. to not be that way. It's like I, I'm like an old banana. You know, the, older I, the longer I stay around, the mushier I rotten. get. Rotten. <laughs> That's a rotten banana. What they call that? Oh, we'll have more mirth and merriment tomorrow. Jeff Passan joins us tomorrow. Uh, I won. Jeff Passan joins I won. us tomorrow. We'll have Blue Jays talk following tonight's game. I'm sure we'll say something Al on Barker, that, Jeff. Oh, Barker, you're the best. You won. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Fan wow. free games next.